Good morning. Very warm welcome to our service today. And today we're going to be sharing communion together. And if you remember, you don't actually have to have partaken of the bread and the wine to be in communion with Jesus Christ. It's just enough that you know him as your personal saviour. So let's just still ourselves for a moment now before God. The Lord be with you and also with you. We'll start by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, as we have confessed those sins, may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, 
he took bread and gave you thanks, saying, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So please now, as I take this bread and this wine, you are taking it too. You are sharing in the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. his body broken for you. And his blood shed for you. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from a book in the Old Testament called Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This was a word given to the people of Israel by the prophet Isaiah. And you might think, well, that's quite a nice word. It's quite positive. The fruit trees are going to fruit. They're going to go out singing. The mountains and the hills are going to be before them and they're going to have a wonderful time. But actually, this prophecy comes in the middle of quite a torrid time for the people of Israel. In fact, I'm going to take you right back to the very beginning and give you an overview of everything that's been going on since 
God created the world. So right back in the beginning, God created this beautiful, amazing world. A world that he was really pleased with, he was really proud of. And he loved it so much he wanted mankind to share that with him. So he created mankind and put them in the world. But as, there, as with any system, with any place, there are rules that need to be obeyed for that place to work. And the world was no different. But there were very, very few rules. Firstly, he wanted man to look after the world, to tend it, to look after the earth. And secondly, there was one tree in one garden that they were not allowed to eat the fruit from. Just one. They could have any of the rest of it. All they had to do was avoid eating the fruit of this one tree. Well, mankind being mankind, no different now to how they were then. If you tell them not to do something, that's the first thing they want to do. So sure enough, they were tempted. They yielded to that temptation and they ate the fruit. And that was the first sin. Now, the problem with disobeying God is, if you disobey his rules, then something comes between you and him. There's a separation. God who made this amazing world and gave but one rule to be obeyed could not allow that to go unpunished or unnoticed. So, what was God going to do? Was he going to say, do you know what, I'll scrap the lot and start again. I've got plenty of planets, I'll put mankind on a different one. No. He loved this planet and he loved mankind so much that he set about trying to bring the two back together. With all sorts of plans, all sorts of amazing schemes to try and bring mankind and God back together. Now if you read the Old Testament from the beginning, you will see all the different plans that God had for mankind, especially the plans he had for the Israelites, for his people. There were journeys, there were wars, there were famines, there were plagues. There were all sorts of things that God sent. Not least sending people that really did believe in him and love him into very, very difficult situations. You can read all about it. There's loads of stories, there's loads of characters. And reading some of them, I must admit, I find myself thinking, where are you, God? Are you there at all? And I'm sure some of those people at the time must have thought, what's going on? Why are we in so much difficulty? What is going on? But all the way through, God had got them. The difficulties were as a result of their disobedience, but God had got them throughout. It had been a long journey for the Israelites and a difficult journey for the Israelites. And right in the middle of all that difficulty comes this word from God. That all his promises that he'd ever given were not empty. They would be fulfilled. It says right at the beginning, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. God's word is an extremely powerful thing. He created the earth by his word. He spoke it into being. God's word is powerful. And that means that the words in our Bible, which is God's word, are also powerful. We can read them, we can take them in, we can believe in them, we can rely on them. They're still powerful today. Anyway, back to the story. By the end of the Old Testament, there had been a lot of prophecies, a lot of promises, a lot of judgments, a lot of kings, a lot of famine, a lot of displaced people. A lot of lost people, a lot of murders, and a few small victories. But still, there was no way that God could come close to man again, because man was still sinning. 
So then we hit the New Testament and we hit God's ultimate plan for mankind. There had to be a sacrifice. Now, if you read the Old Testament, you'll read about lots of sacrifices, blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices, which were given to try and bridge the gap between God and man. That was the whole point of them. That was the only way people could enter into God's house, was to bring a sacrifice. But none of them could overcome the sin of man, or at least not in the long term, only temporarily. So we hit the New Testament and we hit God's ultimate plan for mankind. And not just for the Israelites, but for mankind for all time to come, for forevermore, for right up to today and beyond. And that ultimate plan was to send the ultimate sacrifice. God needed to show that he got us and to get us, he sent and sacrificed his own son. He sent Jesus and Jesus died to bridge the gap between us and God. It was the only way that he could do it. God's got us. God's got every one of us. Whether we want to acknowledge that or not is up to you. We're currently living in quite difficult circumstances, which will have affected us each individually in very different ways. There are lots of people out there that have had terrible times and have lost loved ones, most unexpectedly. But it doesn't alter the fact that God's still got us. Read the Old Testament. People didn't have an easy time of it. People had a really hard time of it, just as we're doing now. But God's still got us. My question to you is, have you got God? God sent Jesus as a sacrifice so that we could believe in him. We could accept his work. We could accept what he'd done on the cross for us. We could accept his death and his resurrection. And if we accept that and buy into that and say yes to Jesus, then we also will have everlasting life. We all have to die, but there will be a life after death. It doesn't guarantee that we're going to have a really easy life while we're here. So if that's a motivation for you, don't be fooled. Life can still be hard. But God's got you. And if you've got God, together, you will get through anything. And then from verse 12, you shall go out in joy. You will be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That's a very poetic way of saying that if you follow God, if you accept Jesus as your saviour, that life will be sweeter, life will be better. You will have peace and joy, even in circumstances where that wouldn't naturally come to you. Don't miss this opportunity, this time of thinking. You might have more time on your hands now than you've had for a long time. Use this time to draw close to God, because God's still got you. Have you got him? Let's spend some time in prayer together. Jesus called us to pray without ceasing and so that's what we shall be doing this morning praying without ceasing so let's pray Lord we bring you our prayers today everything that's on our minds Father we're so grateful that you're such an amazing God that you can listen to each one of us, wherever we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father God, our world is your creation. You made everything in it and gave it to mankind to take care of. We're sorry, Lord, for the state your world is in today. With us all focusing so much on the COVID virus, so many other problems are being missed. So we bring before you today, Father, all the troubled places of the world. Places where people, your people, go hungry and thirsty. Places where they have to cope with violence and oppression. Places that are overrun with refugees who are trying to make a better life for themselves and for their families. Only you, Lord, are powerful enough to solve all these difficulties. But we know that you need our hands to do your work. We offer ourselves to you today. Use us, we pray. Help us to see what we can do in our own small ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift to you our government and all the governments of the world. We pray for more Christian input into matters of state. We ask that you would bring more Christian MPs forward. We ask too, Lord, that you would inspire world leaders to work together for the good of the whole world, not just for their own small corners. Give them wisdom and give them the strength and the courage to use that wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you all those we know who need your healing touch in their lives. We think of all who may be in pain, those who have had bad news medically this week those who are awaiting hospital appointments or results, those who are finding life mentally difficult to cope with, those who are grieving. Lord, you alone can be all things to all people. We ask that you would meet them where they are, that you would be everything they need that you would wrap your loving arms around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as your churches prepare to reopen, we pray that you would help us not to rush, but to take things carefully and safely. We thank you for all the different ways you have encouraged us to worship, and be together spiritually during lockdown. Lord, in the excitement of going back into the church buildings, let us not forget the new online congregations we have made, the new groups that have come together. This may be the only way they can worship you as a congregation. Lord God, we want you to be at the heart of worship wherever and however we are able to be together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's just have a moment or two of quiet to bring our own thoughts to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers, Lord, and keep us always close to you. Keep us under the shadow of your wing. Amen. I'm going to close today with a reading from the Psalms. It's Psalm 8. O Lord our God, 
How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise. Because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands you put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Father God, we thank you for all the wonderful things you have given us. Lord, help us to be worthy of that great love that you've bestowed upon us. Help us to serve you as we serve one another in your name. Amen. And so, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love, now and always. Amen.